Hey everyone, this is our long form video about carbon intensity, 45Z tax credits, carbon insetting versus offsetting, and how this is gonna make your farm a lot of money from what I am seeing. And I am really excited to be part of your journey and helping to optimize the score and optimize your bottom line profitability. Finally giving us the scoreboard and a point system for our environmental impact our environmental footprints of our farm and uh, for the efforts that you're already undertaking to improve your soil health now you can directly get paid with these carbon intensity credits so what is carbon intensity carbon intensity is my new favorite thing carbon intensity it allows us to essentially put a carbon score on an acre and therefore on the bushel carbon intensity is essentially what is your carbon footprint of that bushel it plays off of the carbon credits, and it's still in a format of a CO2 equivalent, but it's the CO2 equivalent on the bushel. So it's looking at what goes into your production, how do you farm, and what is the environmental impact of how you farm. Not how you used to farm, not how you're going to farm, but what you are doing right now that goes into that bushel and carbon intensity is just the scoring mechanism around that one step further is that carbon intensity is really important within the renewable fuels space so they look at the carbon intensity of ethanol versus fossil fuel and when looking at renewable fuels a contributor to the carbon footprint or the carbon intensity of that fuel it factors in the corn or the feed stuff that's utilized to create that renewable fuel. As a farmer, we really need to care about carbon intensity because the, a huge piece of the carbon intensity of renewable fuels comes from the scope three carbon footprint, which is mostly the grain coming from the farm. And we need to be able to tell our story into the supply chain so that the ethanol industry, renewable fuels industry, can accurately tell their carbon story and can accurately define their carbon intensity. As a farmer, I care because my data is not free. And to share my data with my grain off taker, they're going to have to adequately compensate me for that story. And the better my score, the more value it is for the ethanol manufacturer or the biodiesel manufacturer, the more carbon credits that they're going to get paid, the more tax credits they're going to get, and therefore the bigger value that I can garner back to me. I also like carbon intensity on the farm because it gives me a score. It gives me a point system. It gives me a holistic look at what is my farm's carbon footprint. And the better that number, the more it means to the off-taker of my grain and the more monetary value that can come back to the operation. The score itself is really holistic. Lots of things go into your carbon intensity score, including your fuel usage, electrical usage, LP, your fertilizer, NP and K, your lime, your herbicides, um, your yield itself, your tillage practices, your manure practices, your cover crop. It's pretty holistic. Lots of things, lots of ways that you can garner points. Corn has a standard carbon intensity score of 29.1. And you can choose what you want to do to lower that score. Now, cover crops and no-till get you a lot of points, but they're not the only way to create points. And at Continuum Ag, we're here to help you to understand how to optimize the score and how to profitably improve and do what's best for your operation and your context. So, yes, improving you know, the implementation of these soil health principles can garner a lot of points for you, but it's not the only thing. Better manage your fertilizer, better manage your, your yields and, uh, and your manure, your inputs and stuff, and you can garner these points as you go. Carbon offset markets are completely different. Don't think about this as an offset program. Carbon offsets play into the voluntary carbon markets where you have to abide by the global rules like additionality, permanence, leakage, all these things that are really tough to define in agriculture and also 
a voluntary carbon offset credit isn't worth that much. 40 bucks, 50 bucks, you know, per ton, not worth that much money. And by the time it trickles down to us on the farm, there's not a whole lot of dollars to be garnered there. That's carbon offsets. What we're talking now is carbon insetting and lowering the scope three carbon footprint of the industry. Not selling carbon as an asset on its own, but selling the carbon story connected to the commodity in the supply chain. I like this a lot better because now it's what went into that bushel, not the change of practice. How do you farm right now? What went into that bushel? And can you document and verify that what you said you did and the environmental gain that you created, can you back that up? And if you can back that up, it creates value for the next person in the supply chain and they need our story and they've got to pay for that data and for that story. Um, they're going to be monetarily compensated and we get monetarily compensated. The further we go, the more we get paid. Why I like this as well, I've been preaching from the mountaintops that in regenerative ag, we need to have a scoreboard and we need to know how to create points and we need to be monetarily compensated for the points that we create. The scoreboard today has been yield, the, the yield monitor. <laughs> yield monitors the scoreboard, bushels are the points, and we have a pretty good idea of how to create more points, more bushels, and we get paid based on the bushels we create. Now, the scoreboard is within topsoil and your carbon intensity score. And the point system, we can show you how to improve, and the point system is driven by all these different holistic farm management inputs, and the more points you create, the more of a premium that you can earn on your grain. This has become such a big deal because of the Inflation Reduction Act and 45Z tax credits. So this is a federal government thing. I don't foresee it being a federal government thing for forever, but for today, it's a federal government play where there's tax credits for the renewable fuel manufacturers and they can earn these credits by reducing their carbon footprint. And part of the carbon footprint of renewable fuels is us on the farm. Okay, so this is coming from the US federal government. This is a US thing only. And currently, this is mostly just for renewable fuels. However, the concept here behind documenting the practices on your farm, getting a score on your acre and on your unit of production and tying that score into marketplaces, that is where I see this going in the long haul. Where it's everything that you do tied to the production that you have and tell that story in the marketplace where it can be garnered a value because of marketing, because potentially of these credits, but mostly because that story and that environmental footprint matters to federal government, but also matters to the consumer at the end of the day. Today, we're talking carbon. However, the, the systems that we're using to lower our carbon footprint also improve water quality. Some of these things improve our mitigation against flooding. Some of these things improve biodiversity, nutrient density. It's going to be these other outcomes that are also tracked in the same manner that are going to garner credit or a premium in the marketplace. Why, what I love is it's the same data that we're gonna collect now for these programs that we can stack other outcomes on top of. So the, the 45Z tax credit law says that the scoring system will come from the Argonne Greet National Lab, which is a US Department of Energy lab. And at the lab, they created the Greet model. And the Greet tool is what we utilize to run the carbon intensity score. The GREET tool is not perfect, but it gives us a number and the law says that it's gonna use the GREET tool to get this score. Now there's still some dust to settle as we record this in early 2023, but that GREET tool or something very similar is where the score will come from and it's what's going to be utilized to create these points. But again, it's a US Department of Energy tool, so it's not perfect but we know how to create points in the system today, and we know how to, how to help you to maximize this opportunity. So the way that this 
premiums actually work is that it's a tax credit to the ethanol manufacturer. We'll use that as the base example. And the credit is two cents per carbon intensity point reduction per gallon of ethanol. At my local ethanol facility, they can create 2.7 gallons of ethanol per bushel. Okay, so when I take that two cent premium to the bushel, it's 5.4 cents per CI point reduction per bushel. On my farm, we've reduced our carbon intensity score of the bushel from the standard 29.1 to negative 4.4. That 33.5 CI point improvement times 5.4 cents equates to about a $1.81 value in these tax credits per bushel. Take that $1.81 times 240 bushel corn, we're talking $434 an acre. And uh, the farmer, we don't know what the cut of that will be, but that is a big pie. And there's plenty of margin there to go around to enable us on the farm to farm smarter, get these scores and share that data into the supply chain. But the key thing here is that it's a premium tied to the score. The more points you can earn, the better your opportunity to garner some premium. Today, these programs are set up only for renewable fuels, just because of the 45Z tax credit system. Okay, We didn't write the rules. It's in the Inflation Reduction Act and 45Z tax credit. So today, the only one that can really garner the value is the renewable fuels companies. Okay, So they are the one where you can get the premium from here today. However, I believe that the concept here of holistically scoring the bushel and tying the premium to the score, I believe that that's gonna trickle down through all the other industries as well because they're gonna to have to compete for this low carbon grain that now has a premium going into renewable fuels. So the hog industry is gonna to have to compete like here in Washington County. The, chit, you know, the poultry industry, other processing industries, they're gonna to have to figure out how to utilize a similar program so that number one, they can tell their carbon story, but also they can compete for these bushels. Um, I mean, they already have to compete against ethanol that's already um, propped up by the US taxpayer. This is just more of the same, um, but it's big dollars um, and tied to that low carbon grain. So I just see this as stepping stone number one for other global free markets to be built on top of. Our role at Continuum Ag is to help you to prove and optimize this score. You can go to topsoil.ag and fill out a profile and unlock your carbon intensity score right now. And we can help you to understand what is your current carbon intensity baseline. You can subscribe into our program and we will help you to optimize that carbon intensity score and we will be with you every step of the way to document everything that you're doing on your farm. We wanna help you win and we're gonna win alongside you. The key with this is that you own your data and we show you what it's worth. Not having you be a price taker, but hopefully more of a price maker where you know what your score is, you've got the data put together, you've got the verification done because we helped you to do it and now we go to battle together saying, hey, I know what I've got and uh, I need to be adequately compensated for the value that I'm bringing from my farm. So. We will help you with verification. Go to topsoil.ag, help you to document this every step of the way and utilize our machine learning, our core of being a soil health company and helping you to profitably implement this. We use our bread and butter to help you win now in your short-term economics, but also win in this carbon intensity space. I am full speed ahead, all, the, all in on this opportunity. And uh, I really think that's gonna be, be huge for our operation and for yours.